This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups. And my guest today is all the way from the Midwest, Mike Alton. Mike, thanks for joining us on Rising Tide. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Kevin. So tell our listeners a little bit about Mike Alton. So I am in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, married, have two kids, and we live with my in-laws. So that makes me one of the bravest men that you've ever met. And uh, we're you know dealing with uh, today's situation as best we can. I work full-time for a company called Agora Pulse, which we'll get into no doubt today. And I have the real pleasure to be their brand evangelist. And it's a title we made up, but what that means is I'm in charge of our relationships. So honestly, I think I've got one of the coolest jobs in the world. I get paid to become friends with and help and partner and walk alongside with influencers in the social media space. And they twist my arm and they make me go to Paris two or three times a year. It's really rough. <laughs> Somebody's really got to do it. Someone's Maybe it's that it. offset for living with your in-laws. I, I don't know. Maybe there's That's right. you know, this That's kind right. of the yin and yang thing it's going harmony. there, a little balance, a little harmony. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about Agora Pulse. Okay, so Agora Pulse is what we call a social media management tool, and it's one of the few all-in-one dashboards. There are a lot of tools out there that might focus on a specific platform, uh, like Tailwind is great for Pinterest, or Later is great for Instagram. But Agora Pulse, it's an all-in-one dashboard, which means it also supports Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, mm. Instagram, and YouTube. And on top of supporting different platform, it supports different functions and features. So with Agora Pulse, you can schedule content, you can post content, you can queue it up, you can assign content or responses you might get on content to other teammates. If you've got more than one people that are helping you with your social channels, you can see all that stuff in magnificent reports in terms of what's coming in at you, how you're doing, how the posts are performing, and you can monitor and listen to what's going on on social, which is probably one of the most important things, particularly sure. for a business today, yeah. is to be listening to the conversations that are happening, not just about your brand. Those are kind of the easy ones, right? If someone's talking about you on social, it's fairly easy to find and see that. We can have notifications and stuff set up for that. But when people are having conversations about topics that are related to your brand, maybe they're talking about your industry, maybe they're talking about your hometown, if you're a small business and you're focused on, you know, Wildwood, Missouri, where I'm at, or Norwalk, Ohio, where I'm originally from. That might be the kind of conversation you want to participate in and be involved in. Maybe not to sell. That's not really what social media is good for. But if you can participate and engage with other people and raise their brand awareness, that's a really powerful thing. And that's where a tool like Agora Pulse can really help. So it sounds like to me that it's a much more comprehensive and robust tool than, than you know, what we used to have in, in previous iterations of like Hootsuite or Buffer or something like that. So um, when you say dashboard, is this, I mean, is it like a real time virtual, I mean, like one stop shop, you're looking at, at, uh, you know, a one page, I can just have at a glance how I'm doing on all these different social mediums. Yes and no. It, it has a little bit of everything that you just said, mm -hmm. but not all technically wrapped up into a single page, right? right? So the right. reporting is in a different area. Now, this is all one tab, which is the real beauty there. You've got Agora Pulse open in a tab in your browser. That means you don't have to have Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn and Instagram on your phone open all at the same time. You can be inside that one dashboard and do whatever you want to do on all those different platforms all from one place and involve different teammates and even see what they're doing, right? So if you get a comment in on a tweet, someone replies to one of your tweets with a question, you can call it up in the dashboard and you can be looking at it. You, Kevin, could see that I'm about to reply. It'll tell you Mike is replying. Wow. Or Mike is typing or something yeah. like that. You'll see it right there in the dashboard so that you guys aren't tripping over each other trying to manage the exact same thing at the same time. Mm. And you mentioned real time. This is kind of interesting because it, it talks to one of the limitations that all of these tools have. Hootsuite, Buffer, you mentioned, we're Agora Pulse. I already mentioned Tailwind and Later. That's yep. five different social media management tools that we've already dropped. They're all limited by what the individual platforms will allow them to do. Sure. That's called an sure. API, an yep. advanced program interface. So we don't have, for instance, real time Twitter monitoring. There's a lag of about, I think it's five minutes uh, where things will sync. Other platforms, it is real time. So 
that's a good thing to know when you're going into this, particularly mm-hmm. if like in today's environment, there's stuff going on around the world. People are upset. People are anxious. In, in some cases with some businesses and industries, you might need to be on top of what's happening. Easy example that I'm sure it doesn't apply technically to anyone listening would be an airline, right? If you're Southwest Airlines, you need to be listening to the second, to everything that's being said on Twitter about and to your brand because people are coming to Twitter for customer service. Now that's a really broad, high level example that I, like I said, I'm sure it doesn't really apply to anybody listening right now, but to a lesser extent that applies to everybody because everybody today as an individual consumer we're welcome to go to Twitter for Mm -hmm. customer service. We're welcome to go to Twitter to complain about the service we receive from a company. And unfortunately, we can do that without talking to the company first. Exactly. Right? If my pizza is delivered half an hour late, I can go to Twitter and complain about the pizza company if I want to. And I didn't have to talk to the manager at that store and give them an opportunity to make it right before I took it public. So that's one of the really important reasons to have, first of all, have a social media presence and to have a tool and a dashboard where you have things like that set up as what we call save search. And you're listening for those kinds of opportunities to make sure everything's okay with your customers. Right. I mean, I, it's almost like a Google alert, you know, with like if, if there's a search that kind of indicates they've searched for your name or company name or whatever. I, I, you, you touched on this, the, the power of Twitter, you know, as a, as a response mechanism. I, I have a, a personal example where I had a claim denied on an air conditioner. It was one of those home, home warranty things. We had just bought our house and the air conditioner, you know, went out and they denied the claim. And I mean, I gave them multiple opportunities and then I decided to hit Twitter up. And it was amazing that the shift in the, in the response when I, when I sent out that tweet and and surprisingly they they kind of changed their stance on the on the claim and ended up paying for the claim and um so it is a powerful powerful medium i mean not not just not just twitter but i mean that that is just a, an example you brought up but so you and i are going to step onto an elevator and you're the brand evangelist for gore, <laughs> gore pulse so give me the the pitch and maybe kind of in that pitch identify who is the the avatar, who's the, the you know, prime client for Agora Pulse, Pulse? Well, I love the question, but it's a bit ironic because while I'm obviously here to talk about Agora Pulse, the fact of the matter is I'm not in sales for Agora Pulse. I'm technically the anti-sales guy because my job is to work with specific influencers. And I honestly, I give away the product. I don't sell it. I give it away. So with that hey, said, buddy, we're me, all in sales. <laughs> let me take a crack at <laughs> this. <right. laughs> Whether we want to be or not, we're all in sales. <laughs> okay, sorry. It, it just oh. it froze up on oh, my it froze. End, so Sorry about that. Yeah, there was a glitch. Go ahead. Hey, it's it's the internet, it's Zoom. <laughs> this is this is this is life today. So uh, yeah, if we were to get on an elevator, I'd say, look, Kevin, I don't know what you're doing or what you're using right now when it comes to social media in the platforms. But if you've got more than a few profiles and you're kind of handling them manually, if you've got other team members that are involved, or if you're managing social for other people, or if you're a company where you've got a lot of different profiles and maybe you're using one or two different tools, you've got spreadsheets and that sort of thing, that's an opportunity for you to take a look at a social media management tool like a Girl Pulse. There, might, there are others and they might be better suited for you, but I would encourage you to take the time to consider a tool like a Girl Pulse because it's probably gonna save you money. And for all of us, that money is much better spent elsewhere. And obviously mm. you might spend a little bit more for the tool itself, but have you thought about the time that you're spending on all these different social networks? If you're spending 30, 60, 100 minutes a day responding to comments and bouncing across the different platforms and different tools, we could trim that using a really solid dashboard like Agora Pulse, trim that down to 20, maybe 30 minutes a day tops. And that includes scheduling out all of your content for the week, responding to all the comments and the replies, retweeting some other people, sharing some other people's content, reviewing what your team's been doing, and taking a look at the reports. This is a really cool part. You can download the reports, and whether it's you or you're reporting to somebody else or you've got clients involved, you can export those reports and show them and actually show off what you've been doing and the successes that you've been hitting in social media. That, that's, uh, I mean, just the time factor alone. 
you know, almost sells the product that says like, we can reduce the amount of time you spend on that. And, you know, time, the old adage, time is money. I mean, just that alone, can you use that time, you know, in other revenue producing activities, you know, and, and let this kind of run on its own. So, I mean, you mentioned there are other so tools true. out there, but I, I know that I had a former guest on, you know, really early in the podcast, his name is Ian Anderson Gray, and he's, he's in the yep. UK. He is a huge Agora Pulse fan. So, and, and, and an evangelist like you are maybe an unpaid evangelist, but he is certainly an evangelist <laughs> as, as for the, for the brand. Well, Ian and I have been friends for a long time. I've known Ian a long time and Ian is one of my ambassadors. He is actually um, one of our paid ambassadors, which means we've got a long standing business relationship where he's doing work for us and we're supporting him. We're promoting him and we're collaborating together because that's one of the really cool things about our program. And quite frankly, why so many people ask me to talk about and teach how we do influencer marketing at a sure. pulse because yeah. it's different. Yeah. I don't pay people to do a tweet. I don't pay people one off to sponsor a newsletter or do something like that. I form a relationship with them. And then over time, as that progresses, as they fall in love with the tool and we're helping them and we're collaborating with them, that might evolve into what we have like with Ian, where right. actually we're paying him every single month a stipend to be an ambassador. Right. And now we're creating all kinds of wonderful things, courses and that sort of thing together. So that's really cool. And I love that relationship. But I wanted to mention, because you talked about Hootsuite um, and you were talking about how, how much time a good tool can save you. I used to be the Hootsuite guy. I literally wrote the book on Hootsuite about eight years ago. And because uh, I, I was big on, on Google Plus when Google Plus was a thing. And I had a huge audience there and I was teaching everybody about Hootsuite. And then I discovered Agora Pulse. It was 2016. I was sitting down at a table, social media marketing world. And a friend of mine, Pat, Pat Fitzpatrick, introduced me to Emmerich Arnaud, who's the CEO of Agora Pulse. And he whipped out his phone and showed me the app. And I was instantly amazed, literally amazed at how much time I knew I was going to be able to save by switching from Hootsuite, which was already a social media dashboard, switching from Hootsuite to Agora Pulse. And the main thing there is the inbox. And this is one of the major differences in selling points uh, to a tool like Agora Pulse. For those of you who've used Hootsuite, I don't know if you've ever used Hootsuite, Kevin, but the way Hootsuite was set up is that you'd have streams and tabs, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd create, a, you'd set up a stream for your Twitter profile and inside that stream you'd have, or you set up a tab for your Twitter profile and inside that tab, you'd have a stream for the replies. Well, then you have another stream next to it for the mentions. And then you'd have another stream next to that for the direct messages. And then you'd have another stream next to that for the outgoing messages. And then you have another stream next to that for the scheduled tweets. And that gets a little confusing, <laughs> having all these different streams and all these different things going on at one time. Agora Pulse combines all of it into one inbox. So you go into the inbox and you see all of your replies, all of your retweets, all your mentions, all your direct messages right there in one column. And then they take it to the next level because you can like and you can reply all of them right there inside the dashboard. And then you can hit a review button and it goes away. And you can sift through that inbox and look at all the different tweets all the different replies and mentions and so on that you might need to do something with. And you can handle the ones that you need to handle, right? Uh -huh. Sometimes people might retweet you and you, okay, that's fine. Great. Thanks. You don't need to thank them for retweeting sure. you. But if somebody shares your content and they make a big deal of it, well, that's something I want to thank them for. So I'm looking for those kinds of things that stand out that I want to actually address, or maybe a question that I want to answer. Once I've done that, all I'm left with is the retweets that I didn't need to do anything with. I've got a bulk review button at the top. So I hit that button and whoosh, everything's gone. And now I'm at inbox zero. And I have taken care of all of the tweets that I needed to take care of. And more importantly than that, there's this thing that happens as human beings when we do something and we can see that it's taken care of. There's brain chemicals that fire that make us feel good about ourselves. Just like checking a box on a to-do list. We have exactly. accomplished something. We've accomplished the fact that we've dealt with all of our tweets that need to be dealt with and they're gone. Now they're not deleted. There's an all button that you can go back to at a tab where you can see everything. Like if you mm -hmm. reviewed something by mistake, it's still there. But in the to review column, it's gone. And of course that's the default view. So there's nothing there until the next time we go back hours a day later, now there'll be stuff that's new. That was one of the big differences to me between Agora Pulse and Hootsuite because right. Hootsuite's tabs and streams, they didn't do that. 
It was just a nonstop thing. So you could easily lose track of what you needed to address with a tool like that. So I can just imagine a million social media managers out there that have sold their services to companies and they're done by about 8.45 a.m. with their day. And then they're just kicking yeah. back and, and, you know, playing like Tetris or, or you know, Candy Crush <laughs> for the rest of the day and, and billing out, you know, eight hour days. So, you know, really building that into the quote. But I mean, it, yeah. that, that sounds like to me this, a social media manager's best friend. I mean, literally, yeah. if you can make their life that easy, you know, and that manageable and that the tool would almost sell itself. So, I mean, what a what a great, you know, great tool that that could be. So. I encourage anyone to, that is listening to this that you know has you know uses social media tools and this sounds like it would be a good fit, you know check out their 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 uh, website for sure. But I really wanted to dive. We talked a little bit off camera about this, but I mean it's such a timely issue mm -hmm. that we're dealing with just globally right now. The the whole COVID nineteen coronavirus you know pandemic. Tell me, and you can you can head in either direction you want to head in this. It's just completely up to you. It's your show, but. Uh, I, I really want to talk about two major issues. One of them is like the tools that that actually could be helpful in this in this instance, and then maybe just kind of general business lessons about you know how to navigate this new normal, you know, or, or new abnormal we're heading towards. So um, you can you can take off in any direction you want to take off, but I just want to kind of get out of your way. And this is really our <laughs> our you know startup school you know time, and it, it is so timely about this topic. So to just kind of speak to our listeners about these issues. Yeah, and for reference, you know, the time they're recording this, it's April 2nd, we're in the middle of this COVID crisis, and everything that I'm going to be saying is about that. But the interesting part is that most of what I'm saying isn't new. Most of what I'm about to say has applied in the past to crises. And everybody you know. listening today, obviously we're all impacted by this super unique what they call a black swan event, where it, it impacts every single person on the globe in some way. That's not always going to be the case. There will be times in the next 6, 12, 18 years later where you as an individual business owner that's listening to me right now, something's going to happen. It might not be global. It might be national. It might only affect your region. It might only affect your town. The end result is the same. You as a business need to recognize that something has happened and your target audience is being impacted by that something, whatever it is. And now you need to frame everything that you're going to say in your marketing material, in your customer service conversations, in your sales conversations, as though you're sitting in your audience's shoes and going through what they're going through, even if it's not maybe impacting you personally, right? Maybe there's something that's happened in your hometown. Maybe you're in Pennsylvania and one of the steel mills has closed down. Now there's all kinds of people in your hometown that are being laid off. Not you, you're a plumber or you know, you're a lawyer or a doctor or somebody like that. So you're not personally impacted, but your audience is. So how are you going to speak on social mm -hmm. media in a way that reflects that fact? Now, today, it's a little bit easier. I, I don't want to say that, obviously, a pandemic is easy, but it's easier in the sense that we know, generally speaking, what's happening, and we know what's happening around the world. So we know everybody's impacted. We don't have to really guess, okay, is the person I'm talking to really impacted by this or not? They are. Everybody's being told to stay at home. Everybody is or knows somebody who's getting sick or being laid off or being you know, impacted in all these different ways. So that's the context of everything I'm about to say. So something has happened, in this case, it's a global pandemic. And when it gets around to impacting you as a business or your audience, the first thing you got to do is stop. You've got to stop. You've got to stop selling. You've got to stop talking on social media. You've got to stop your emails, your customer service automated responses, everything. Because you need to give yourself some time to review all of that and think about it. Now, if you're a relatively small business, you might not need a lot of time because you might not have a lot, you might not have a lot going out. If you're the plumber that I mentioned earlier, you probably don't have automated email messages going out. You probably don't have um, confirmation emails for online sales and those kinds right. of things to worry about. You might not even have automated social media to go out. But depending on your business, you probably have something 
that's out there. Maybe it's an ad. Maybe, you know, it's a TV commercial or radio commercial or print ad that's scheduled or a magazine or something like that. You might have automated dialing systems that are working for you. Whatever it is, think through. And here's a real tip. Have a playbook created today for tomorrow's crisis. Don't wait until tomorrow's crisis to try to think through, what do I do now? Mm. Obviously today with this environment, this pandemic, we're all in the middle of it, so we're all trying to sort this out. But let that be a lesson to you who haven't thought through what to do in these kinds of issues. Take that time to create yourself a little playbook. It doesn't have to be a, a long time to build and doesn't have to be anything fancy and spreadsheets or anything like that. A, a Google Doc is fine, a list, okay. I've got Twitter, Facebook page, and Instagram. I'm using Agorapulse to auto-tweet my evergreen content, my blog content that I've been writing right. for a while. I've got Facebook ads running. I've got Google ads running. Um, I sponsor newsletters. I've got automated email responses that go out with my online purchases. And I, oh, I've got that radio commercial that I paid for next month. That's where you need to start. Because by stopping as much as you can stop, that gives you a little bit of breathing time to think through and reread everything that you've got going out with the eyes and ears of somebody who's sitting in the middle of this oh, that's, crisis. That's great advice, yeah. So important. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you a terrible example. Let's suppose I'm marketing my social media services, which I don't, but let's suppose that I manage social media for other people and I've got a Facebook ad running that says, Hey, wouldn't you like to take your business viral today? That's what we call tone deaf in today's environment. Yep. When the world is battling a virus, you don't want to be talking about going viral on social media because other people are going to read that and you're going to make them think about the pandemic and not your business service. And they're going to look at you poorly at a minimum, right? At a minimum, they're going to ignore your ad and not hire you they might take it worse. They might leave you nasty comments. They might uh, flag it as spam. They might talk about you. I mean, here's the really worst case scenario. And we've seen this with every single crisis that's ever happened. We've seen brands who make the mistake of proceeding with marketing that wasn't well thought out, that wasn't reread with that eye and ear to what's going on today. And then the rest of the world's like, how could you say that? And so they ended up sharing it. They end up talking about it. We could probably Google some actual articles that point out specific brands that made the mistake of doing something dumb during a crisis. But you can avoid that because now you're building a playbook. And here's another point. If you've got Facebook ads running, like I just mentioned, and you've got an ad that's worded poorly given today's environment and people are leaving you negative comments. And let's say you built that ad in ads manager. You just went into Facebook ads manager and you created an ad targeting your local demographic. You won't see those comments inside Facebook. Many of you listening today probably didn't know that, but if you go into ads manager and create an ad from scratch inside ads manager and somebody comments, you will not get a notification in Facebook about that comment. You need to go into ads manager on a daily basis and actually click through to those ads and look to see if anybody's commenting or have a social media management tool like Agora Pulse that will monitor Facebook ad comments. We're not the only ones. That's not the only reason right, to subscribe to right. Agora Pulse, but as a good example, that's one of the real benefits of having a good solid monitoring tool in place is you won't miss things like that. Okay. So it's more, much more than a scheduling tool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So as a business, that's where you start. You shut everything down. You buy yourself some time to think through. Another easy example is when, um, and we've seen this with airlines where something will happen, uh, like maybe there's a data breach or something like that. And there's, there's a major PR crisis. That's about that business. And they rush to put something out. And almost invariably that rushed response is not the best response. So then they end up having to come back with a follow-up response and then another follow-up response because they thought the best thing to do was get ahead of the problem and put something out fast. And that has never worked. I've talked to so many super bright professional PR people who've said, no, stop, pause, take your time. 
give yourself 30 minutes, 60 minutes, half a day, whatever you need to come up with what are your next steps. So that brings us to what are your next steps? If you're a business going through a crisis like this, where it isn't the business itself, but it's the environment that we're in. Right. So in that case, usually what you're going to want to do is exercise as much empathy as you are humanly Mm -hmm. capable of doing and think through my target audience. Who are they? What are they going through right now? How can I help them? How can I help them? And that might have nothing to do with what you sell. They may not need what you sell right now. Maybe they do, or maybe they will down the road. But that's a deep, time-consuming conversation to have. And ask people. Don't, you don't have to rely on your own self and your own perception of your business. In fact, one of my strongest pieces of advice is for every business. It has nothing to do with this particular topic, but I love pointing this out. Every business owner should be part of a mastermind group. Mm-hmm. Every business owner should have a group of peers and colleagues, maybe inside your industry, maybe not, but people that you can turn to and ask, and bounce ideas off of and get feedback. And then you can do the same for them. This isn't what some people refer to as mastermind groups where you've got like one guy who's charging you a hundred bucks a month to be in his quote unquote mastermind group where he's teaching everybody else. That's just a mentorship or a class, right? Mastermind groups are with peers. This is, was a Napoleon Hill concept and I love it. So I'm in a mastermind group. If I've got a question, if I'm not sure how to proceed, if I want to make sure that my thinking is correct on something, I can throw it to the group and I can instantly get feedback. And this isn't coworkers. This isn't people that work for me that might be, you know, maybe they're a little bit afraid to tell Mike what they think. Maybe they only want to tell Mike what they think Mike wants to hear. Sure. These are people outside the company. So that's the next step as a business. Come up with what you should be saying to your audience next and then say that and then say it again and then say it again because you want to be there for your audience and again these might just be words of comfort these might have nothing to do with selling your services while you're doing that then the next thing is okay figure out okay as a business what are our next steps how do we keep our business going because every business has to keep going that's one of the realities today that i see a lot of people struggling with i see people today during this pandemic criticizing other businesses for not giving away their stuff for free. Whatever it is that stuff is that they sell, why aren't you giving it away for free? And it's unfortunate because as human beings, we tend to think about ourselves and our mm. you know, short access, short-term access. And the reality is our society will fall apart, just totally fall apart. The economies will totally crash if businesses stop selling. That's exactly right. So businesses have to keep selling. Now, they don't have to sell the same things. They don't have to sell the same things at the same prices. You know, there's there's creative ways that we can go about this. Like I personally have a blogging site because I like to teach people blogging. So instead of continuing with the the 10-week course that I had scheduled to start this week, I discounted it. I opened it up so that people could get into it right away rather than spread it out over 10 weeks. And I said I'd do some one-on-one consulting with them over on top of that. So that was my way of helping those people. Um, at Agora Pulse, we just announced today that we're giving away four full weeks of access to our social media training school. So if you want to learn social media or you want to learn how to be a social media manager or even an agency owner that, that specializes in running social media for other businesses, you could jump into that class right now. It's at agorapulse.com slash free training. You can sign up for four full weeks. That offer as of right now, um, it's only through the month of April. So up until the last day of April, you can sign up. And then whatever day you sign up, you get four full weeks. So I know this is a podcast and there's some lag. So if you're listening to this right now, go today and, and, and see if that's still available for you. Other businesses, they're actually selling things that people need today. Like toilet paper was the fun example a week ago. But a, another interesting example that, that some people wouldn't be thinking about is swimming pools. People need swimming pools today. People are stuck at home with their families. They can't take their kids to the park. They can't take their kids to a pool. They can't even take their kids to their friend's house. And they need things to keep their kids occupied and to keep the entire family together and happy and sane. And a swimming pool is just one example of many different things that parents and homeowners could consider purchasing today. Because we had... um, 
we had Marcus Sheridan on uh, one of our shows over in Gorpals earlier this week. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Marcus Sheridan, he's known as the sales guy, the sales lion. Uh, he's got a different, couple of different properties and he's been teaching content marketing and sales for years. He's someone that I consider an informal mentor. It's not a formal arrangement, but I consider him a bit of a mentor. I've looked up to him for years. He is originally a pool guy. He had a pool company back in the mid 2000s called River Pools based out of, I think, Virginia. And he kind of modeled and discovered the power of content marketing and the power of creating real content that your customers need at the point that they need it. And he turned his pool company around during the recession. He ended up selling pools when other company, pool companies are going to business. And he made the same point this week, not so much about content, but the fact that people still need pools. People still need things like that. And if you recognize that fact as a business and you're able to create content, social media messaging, video content, podcast, whatever the case might be, that talks to those people in a way that makes sense, not selling them an 18 inch round, you know, three quarter inch wall pool with a diatomaceous earth filtration system and a five horsepower pump. Nobody's buying that. That's not what I'm interested in. I am interested in a solution to keeping my kids happy and safe at home. Right. Right. So thinking through that. Yep. And off the internet while we're trying to record podcast episodes because it, it, it messes with our buffering for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Stop streaming Netflix. It's That's rotting exactly your brains, right. Kids. kids, get off the Netflix so we can do <laughs> educational podcasts like this. So like, I love the way yeah. you, you kind of just really framed that with the whole idea of, you know, it's, it's begin with empathy and end with empathy and have empathy interwoven throughout the the entire thing. And it really is an opportunity for us to kind of hit the pause button a little bit and say, let's review everything we do from operations to marketing, to content, to everything, you know, even the procedures that we go through, the processes that we go through, it's now a time to kind of hit the refresh and, you know, businesses do need to continue. We can need to continue. We may have to pivot. We may have to, to offer different services, reframe those services. You know, I mean, so how does Tesla and, and Ford go from we're making cars now to making, you know, um, the whole idea of ventilators, between, and, you know, ventilators yeah. and, and, you know, how, do, how does a clothing company start making masks, you know, surgical masks and stuff like that. So that, this is what we're seeing and happening in real time right now. So but I, I really appreciate you just kind of outlining this just from a, you know, how to, how to leverage social media, but also you know, just from a business standpoint, how to navigate these difficult waters we're going through. And um, I, I do want to honor your time today. And, and uh, you know, we talked about a lot of things, but is there one thing you, real briefly you just want to kind of close with and then tell people the best place to, I mean, you already mentioned kind of this, the free course and links, but just a little bit more about the best place to contact you. Yeah, I would say that w one thing I want to mention that, that really builds on what we've been talking about because I've heard this before. I've heard business owners sit in a meeting, sit in a boardroom, whatever, with their managers and, and other staff and talk about some issue that has happened and come to the conclusion that for their purposes, it's business as usual. And what I want to suggest is that if you're a business owner and you find yourself saying, yeah, we see that this is happening, but for us, it's business as usual. I want to make you pause. I want to make you stop as you say those words and remember, oh crap, Mike Alton told me if I say the words business as usual, I better stop and rethink what I just thought, what I just said. Because I've seen so many times where businesses thought it should be business as usual, but it wasn't. They either weren't being empathetic enough, or they weren't talking to the right people. And, and this is a true challenge. And I, and I want to give some grace to business owners is sometimes, well, it's always hard mm -hmm. to show empathy to your customers because you're not your customer, you're yourself. You might not even use your product. I used to work for Dana Corporation, uh, which was based in Toledo, Ohio. They were a tier one supplier to Ford, Chrysler, and GM, which meant the big three automobile manufacturers in the United States, Dana Corporation, made most of their parts. So when Jeep in Toledo is putting together Jeeps, 
they're assembling parts that they've sourced from other companies like Dana. Dana would give them the axles. You need two axles for every Jeep. Dana would give them the rims. You need four rims for every Jeep. Firestone would give them the actual rubber tires. You need four of those for every single Jeep, right? You get my drift. Right. You'd have to assemble all these different parts. When 9-11 happened, I was working for Dana Corporation, and I re distinctly recall having a meeting and sitting down with well, people who were in our department and, and, and man managed the, the, the Global Information Technology Group, which was basically the internal IT support system. Mm -hmm. And I remember distinctly them saying, oh, it's, it's business as usual for us. And I was young at the time, and I didn't understand at the time why that was weird to me for them to say that, having just seen what we all saw right. on television. Six months later, it was not business as usual for us. It wasn't business as usual for anybody. Not the same situation that we're dealing with right now by any stretch, but it's an illustration of how a business should be realizing that these are complex systems mm. and it's virtually impossible to sit in a room for 15 minutes and come to any reasonable conclusion of what's going to happen weeks, months down the line when we're talking about so many different factors that can have an impact on consumers and the businesses that they support. So that's my lesson. Hopefully that everybody's listening today that, that you really think hard about things that happen in your area that might impact your target audience even a little bit right. and, and hesitate when you say business as usual. Yeah, so that's hopefully word. that's helped. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to mention earlier, just as a quick aside, is that when you're looking at uh, tools for social media, one of the things you can do often is schedule content. And what you want to make sure that you're doing is putting processes in place or make sure that the features in place where you could easily pause that. Because if you had, for instance, gone to a Facebook page and had manually scheduled out content, because you can do that, manually schedule out a month of content, it's now a manual process to unschedule mm. all that content, yeah. which you might have to do in this kind of an event that might happen. If you've got a queue inside of a tool like a Girl Pulse, there's usually just a pause button. And it's just obviously way easier to just hop into the tool, sure. hit pause, and then you can go back and resume, edit, whatever you want to do down the road. So um, hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully that's been interesting. Um, like I said, I didn't want to make it a sales thing about Agora Pulse because there are other tools like Sprout Social, for instance, uh, that do a lot of the same things that Agora Pulse do and that are really excellent. And the other thing that I would say is if you're a business owner, a small business owner, and you're focused on one platform like Facebook, or Twitter, you, you don't really need a tool. Just spend a lot of time on the platform itself and that'll save you some money. So um, yeah, agorapulse.com and at agorapulse is where we're at on all the socials. <laughs> well, Mike, thank you again for, for just taking the time today. And, and uh, I mean, I know you, you, yeah, even though you use the tool, you don't quit your, your day job at 8.45 a.m. And, and get to take the rest of the day off. So thanks for carving out a little space for us. And, and really just, I mean, what a, what a great masterclass just on, on using a social media tool. And, you know, we get the added bonus and, of you helping businesses navigate through, you know, kind of the, the current pandemic crisis that we're facing. But I just really appreciate you coming on and just helping play your part in helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Mike, thanks again. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Kevin. This has been great.